ridge just coming in. And Mr. Chase receives the token as the train heads towards Haverhill platform. This film was taken in the 1950s. As you see, the footbridge is still there. The train now departs from Haverhill Station towards Cambridge. at Haverhill Station. W.H. Smith bookstore is closed. Mr. Horace Eaves walking along a platform. This was the forecourt of Haverhill Station. where this is, the old police station, Queen Square. And Glasswells, which is now A.B. Hearts. The co-op before it was altered and the high street. Taken from the top of the Playhouse Cinema, looking up the High Street. And down. You notice merchants. In the old post office. Kangle School. the old shops of Queen Street. Fine Fair was just opening here. Woolworths hadn't yet been completed. Officers haven't changed much. Kangle School, which is now boarded up and looks an eyesore. And the rope works, which is gone. The high street here shows Copsey's fish shop and the florist. And as usual, the toilet locked up. Now 
now in Holland's Road with the start of the RA refrigeration factories being built. And not much not much else. The relief road hadn't been opened about two weeks. You can see Reg Richardson's house on the right hand side since gone. The recreation ground. Notice the factory chimney. Standing now at the top of North Avenue, looking down Eastern Avenue, the road joining North Avenue was yet to be completed. Queensway, the fish shop, And looking towards the Clements and a view from the top of the water tower. Now this is the second this is the second Haverhill flood and the manhole is at the top of the hill at Ratting Road near what's now called Westbourne Court. This is the Kangle Corner underwater. Quite sharp current on the water too. The windows reflected in the water. Later that morning we went back and the waters had receded and it was possible then to get with a little difficulty into Queen Street. The parents had to go into the school to help clear up the damage, it was closed for several days. The boat was a little bit late, the water was well on its way down. This is the Rose and Crown Hotel. Queen Street still underwater. Or rather, demolition work of the houses where Mr. Mortlock used to live and Mrs. Stebbing by the old mill house in Ratting Road. The place that's now called Millfields Way ran round about here. It's early one Sunday morning.
Mr. Turner's directing the traffic while his mates knock the houses down with the shovel of that excavator thing, dumper truck. Milkman's now moved on a bit further up the road. Adderton and Ellis is at the other end of the town, and this is where they're making the last wagon wheel ever. Mr. Don Darkin made all the wooden parts of the wheel, which are off to one side, and the fire is surrounding the iron tire heating it up and then the tyre is put over the wood and watered quickly to prevent the wood burning and it's now shrinking the parts, the, all the different wooden parts together to hold them in the wheel shape. Second tyre is now in the fire, out of the fire now, hot, being carried across to the wheel, the wooden parts of the wheel which was already waiting for it. Don proudly made the two wheels. The wheels you've just seen belong to Neville Haylock of Hanshit End, and some 25 years later he gave me one, and we've now made a feature of it in our garden. This is Ratting Road and Station Road at Haverhill as it was in the 1900s. You see the old toilet at the bottom of the Station Road and the trees in the background. Haverhill Station, Forecourt, with the station master's house on the left hand side. This is the site as it is today.
Ratting Road Bridge with the engine standing on the top. The same view showing the footbridge that replaced the railway bridge. Standing the other side of the station, looking towards Cambridge, the engine, the Sudbury train, waiting for the off. as it is today. Standing between the platforms, looking towards Sturma, the Haverhill station had just been closed in 1967. This is the same site. Looking towards the good shed, which still stands. The good shed is now the council depot has been added to the old signal box been vandalized since the closure of the railway standing on the same side. The railway engine you see is coming from behind the cricket ground towards Haverhill Station. standing in the same position. Fiber Lane Bridge from the top, looking towards Haverhill Station. Sturmer Arches. It doesn't look possible that the Colne Valley Railway ran over this track. Standing on top of Sturmer Arches. And a view over the top looking towards Hamlet Green. Fiber Lane Bridge you used to be able to turn right here and go along and up the chalk stones. cattle dock, or the platform of it still stands, and the goods yard, coal yard, 
It's still visible. There's an iron, uh, the iron gutter or curbing. Part of the original footpath. Now looking down Station Road towards the Rosen Crown and our new roundabouts. At Wood Green Animal Shelter, near Godmanchester, they have a bit of old Haverhill, the fountain, which stood at the junction you have just seen on the last shots. Ruffles Mill, the only annular mill in the country. It was said to be a landmark to lead the German aircraft to Stradual Aerodrome, so it was demolished in 1940. It stood in the Millfield Road area of Haverhill. This is an early view taken from the air of Haverhill. <coughs> you see Haverhill Church, the recreation ground. This was Clements Lane. There's first meadow, second meadow gravel pit meadow with the gravel pit and cuckoo. The Clements estate on this site now hasn't been started. This was Bedford's yard. And Reg Richardson's house. Another aerial view of Haverhill shows at the top picture here the fields of Withersfield and the village of Withersfield. You've got Withersfield Road coming in to the High Street, and the old dependent church, St Mary's Church is here, and the railway station and buffer depot. Beyond the old dependent, down the hamlet, Manor Farm Dairies and the Hamlet Croft. In closer detail, you have the old dependent church St. Mary's Church.
Gelatine's factory showing the factory chimney. The relief road was not yet built. Lord's Croft Lane finished here and the footpath through to reach Richardson's house. Bedford Yard is here and Fibre Lane goes across here. The railway station is at the top of the picture with the houses of Ratting Road. The Downs Estate was not built here, but it shows the houses of Colon Road and my house at the end of the garden. Hovis Mill stands out. The Corn Exchange, the West End, and the cattle pens of the old sale yard behind. Addis factory, with the old silk factory, the oldest part of Addis in the foreground. Another aerial view of Haverhill. On this view, you can see the railway line coming from Birdbrook, the Coal Valley, to Coal Valley Station. The line also comes round over Sturmer Arches and down beside the Sturmer line down at the Haverhill Station. This shows it in more detail with the Coal Valley line coming in by the Hamlet Croft and finishing behind Addis. The relief road has been built here and this shows Stern Arches, Aston Ellis, Healy Metals, and projects. Gertine's factory. The old mat factory and the chimney which used to stand 90 foot tall. St. Mary's Church Tower stands 80 foot tall. Notice the old houses around the church, Pease Hill. This shows the cricket ground. The sports centre hasn't been built yet, but it also shows an old familiar footpath called Fibre Lane, which goes from here, Ridge Richmond's house, along underneath the railway and up to Chalks and Hills. Fibre Lane got its name by the fibre waste from Gertine's factory 
been laid down and made a nice springy footpath. The Kangal Corner showing the wall pack and the Kangal School and Station Road. The Downs Estate leading off from Crowland Road. house in Crowland Road, and the gardens behind, next door's greenhouse stands out. From Crowland Road you go across to the cemetery. the cenotaph. Recreation Road and the Recreation Ground. These aerial photographs were kindly lent to me by John Ives. mostly on Saturday. outside. Yeah. 
in the show. It used to be a chapel. My grandmother used to sing there in the choir. One of Paver Hill's windmills used to stand here in Mill Road. The base of it has now been incorporated in this bungalow. Christmas's brewery and maltings used to occupy this site many years ago. It's now the Dolphins. selection of jokes and bottles from the Haverhill breweries.
one was in 1930 in the school top. houses in Haverhill in Camps Road and this of the Camps Road with the part of the recreation ground taken January 1994 more or less the same position in Camps Road showing the old place farm as it was in the 1940s of Haverhill Station. Taken also in the 1940s, 50s. Yard as it was. signal box booking office the forecourt of the station Train coming in from Sturma. A view from the diesel cab going towards Burbank on the Colm Valley line. Cambridge University used to run a train on Sunday afternoons from Cambridge to Haverhill. This is a shot going under the Horsey Viaduct. This is the same university train coming down the Horsey's cutting. Chapman's shop, an unman's house with a greenhouse or conservatory on the end. garage and the doctor's surgery which used to stand next door. Avi Hart's shop was next door to the doctor's in the high street. Nice. 
1906. The High Street, taken in the 1900s. School called the Broad School in 1903. Mount, 1904. The Gertin family lived here. Grace Gertin would have been about two years old. Bumstead Road, as it was. Note the old signpost on the left hand side. house stand in the center. At the top of Clarence Lane was the old isolation hospital. You were taken there when you got the scarlet fever. This was given to the town in 1883 by Daniel Gertine Sr. Note the two gas lamps outside the town hall. This is an early photograph taken before any proper pavements had been laid. 
The building on the left of the porch became much later Withers Garage and is now the site of Provincial Insurance Building. This was Mason's Yard on the right hand side, opposite the provincial buildings, and across the street is now the Ram Pub, or which was the Ram Public House, now Glasswell's Furniture Store. Griffiths Jones is on the right hand side of this shot, next to the Red Lion Public House. Opposite side of the road would be Woolworths. This is taken in the 1860s, a Chauntry house on the right hand side, with the wall was where Cleo's garage used to be. The Haverhill Co op, just newly built, taken from the top of the church tower. This was taken in 1868. It shows the post office on the extreme right, which was a coffee house. The ladder leaning against the wall is the Bell Hotel. St Mary's Church gives a clue of this part of the town, with Peace Hill Slade on the side and the co-op butchers on the right hand side which is now Murray's. In Wittershield Road is the Rose and Crown. Of medieval origin. The man with the hand cart was just to pull someone's luggage down from the station. Haverhill North Station, known as the Iron Footbridge, has not been built, nor the canopies over the platform. And this was Mrs. Emma Gertine, widow of Daniel Gertine Jr. She poses in her gleaming carriage outside the conservatory of Dudley House. Chauntry Road, showing Gertine's factory chimney in the background, with the milkman doing his round. Camps Road, St Mary's Church Hall on the left hand side, now made or converted into houses. And the old brewery on the right hand side and left hand side far uh, distance is uh, now the laundry. Here we see the co-op butchers as it was years ago with Mr. Titus Sizer standing outside. Inside Gertine's factory, the hair rooms, making hair cloth for the clothing industry. About 1909. And this is the ready-made, making the ready-made clothing, um, sewing machines. They went powered by electricity and steam engine was not fast enough to drive them. The old swimming pool at Haverhill Waterworks. It was murky water.
and day the change meant the other. And this is at Hatchet Hall with a 1903 Panard car. The building in the background still stands. The old folks rest on the recreation ground in Victorian times. This was the Greyhound public house where guillotines factory gates are. If you look on the right hand side of the factory gate, you'll see one of the greyhound heads, which you can see on the front of the pub, still on the side of the wall. This was the White Horse public house. On the left hand side was Paul's the Ironmongers, you can see the gateway, late at the Beatrice and Alice Ironworks uh, hardware shop. This was the Butcher's Arms. It's where the new White Hart public house stands. This was the Three Goats in the High Street. The provincial insurance building now, op now occupies this site. Looking at the corner of Camps Road and the co-op on the right hand side which is now Graham's the Chemist 1905 Ah, showing the railway on the left hand side The old White Hart public house being renovated, which stood on the corner of Dudry Road or Dudry Hill. The other, the other side of the dock of surgery was Cleo's. Burton coaches.